This wouldn't officially be my camera until I had broken it in with a book haul, now would it? And I am happy to oblige. This is a lot of books, so I'm going to try to move through them pretty quickly, in theory. I didn't quite realize how much I had piling up until I came home with a bag of books the other day, and when I put them all together I was like, oh man, I need to record this now before anything else comes because this is out of hand. So I will start off with that bag of books. I went to the dollar store, just because every now and then you need to go and spend ridiculous amounts of money on things you don't need because you keep saying it's just a dollar, it's just a dollar. And while I'm there, I always look down the book aisle, and I don't know why, because it's not like I ever actually find anything, right? It's dollar store books. There's never anything to be had. Except that this time there were a lot of things to be had. I don't know what was going on, but it was amazing. From the dollar store, I got Horns by Joe Hill, which I've been meaning to pick up for a while. I mean, this was everywhere for a while there, and I really haven't heard anything bad about it. Yeah, for a dollar, I thought I'd better pick it up. The Fool's Girl by Celia Reese, which I think I might have a copy of. When I was there, I couldn't remember. However, if I do have it, it's a used copy, probably a former library book, so might as well get a new, in perfect condition copy. And I figured the other one can go to someone else, find a new home. So yeah, I wasn't going to pass it up, which should be my motto. And speaking of buying duplicate copies of things, Because It Is My Blood by Gabrielle Zevin. Technically I do have this, but, but I still have an arc and have been meaning to pick this up for a while and just hadn't. This needed to be mine. I think you guys know how I feel about the series. So yeah, as soon as I saw this kind of buried at the back of the shelf, snatched it up right quick. The Flight of Gemma Hardy by Margot Livesey? 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 I don't know. I feel like I heard about this kind of in passing when it was coming out and meant to look into it and never did. And I don't know that it's one that I would have actively sought out, but when it's sitting right in front of me for a dollar and one of the first words in the description is orphan, which is one of my buzzwords, I mean, yeah, it was a given. Revolver by Marcus Sedgwick, which brings my total of Marcus Sedgwick books to lots without me having read any. <laughs> so I need to, I need to get on that and read some of these. Um, but they always sound good and kind of dark, and I've heard a lot of good things about him. So yeah, I'll just add this to the stack. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a Marcus Sedgwick month along with my Meg Cabot month, because I have almost everything by her and have never read any. Um, who else? You guys probably know. I do that. I tend to do that. Francesca Leo Black. I have like all of her books. Haven't read any. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes. I don't know. Another one that I technically own, but this isn't for me. Toads and Diamonds by Heather Tomlinson. I do have this, but I mean I have a fairy tale event every single year and I always need giveaway books, so same goes for The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Revels There by Catherine M. Valenti, which I really liked. I'm a fan of the Girl Who series, even though I've had the most recently released book, The Girl Who Soared Over Fairyland and Cut the Moon in Two. That's been sitting in my Goodreads currently reading thing for oh, months and months and months. I mean, when did I start reading that? Maybe September? And I still haven't finished it. I don't know, I just stalled, it hasn't happened, but it will. Sometimes I'm a little slow getting into these, um, and I have to definitely be in the right mood for them, but when I am in the right mood for them, they're lovely, and I know someone will appreciate this the way I did, so I had to get a copy. I, of course, already have a copy. It's on the sign shelf behind me because I met her, and it was lovely. And the last book from that dollar store haul, another fairy tale, fairy tale-ish thing, at least, I don't really know. And that's Changes by Mercedes Lackey, which I am seeing now is the third book in a series. I haven't read anything by Mercedes Lackey, and everyone always tells me to, so I went ahead and picked it up and just didn't actually look at what it was. <laughs> so if you've read them, let me know if I can jump in at this book. Um, otherwise, I guess this will be on hold for a while until I eventually read those other two. Also, my sister's name is Mercedes, so I feel a kinship there. So that was the dollar store haul, kind of ridiculous, but I mean, would you have passed them up for a dollar? Tell the truth, because you wouldn't have. And here are the other things that have come in my mail recently. Speaking of fairy tales, Why Beauty Slept by Elizabeth Blackwell, which Elizabeth sent to me. She was part of Fairy Tale Fortnite this year. We had all kinds of goodies with her. I will leave a link below 
so that you can check those out if you didn't already. But anyway, obviously this is Retelling of Sleeping Beauty. Title probably kind of gave that away. It might work in some other tales too, I'm not entirely positive, but it just sounds really good. Elizabeth was lovely. And it is signed and came with a bookmark and this little card about Fairy Tale Fortnite and hoping I enjoy the book and all that. So thank you, Elizabeth, and I will definitely be reading and reviewing this for next year's Fairy Tale Fortnite. I might read it sooner, but I'll save the review for then. More fairy tales. This is getting to be a little bit of a theme, but I got a copy of The Hero's Guide to Being an Outlaw by Christopher Healy, which again was featured in Fairy Tale Fortnite, as Christopher has been every single year since the series started. I'll leave a link to those as well. But yeah, this is what wraps up the series, and as thanks for being part of the blog tour in addition to the Fairy Tale Fortnite stuff, um, Walden Pond sent me a finished copy which is also signed and has an Ulta sticker in it. Yeah, that says something about my life. There's that. And it comes with a little letter from Chris, which was really cool. So thank you guys. Thanks Walden Pond and Chris. Yesterday in my mail, I got this package, which has that cool little sticker on it. It says, it came from the woods. Most strange things do. And inside the package, is a copy of Through the Woods by Emily Carroll, which is a graphic novel series of sort of short, dark stories. Definitely fairy tale esque, and it had a letter in it. Dark and sounds intriguing, and I will be talking about soon, and I love the design of it. If you see this in the stores, pick it up because it has a really cool finish to it, too. I love the way it looks. And it also came with a poster which on one side has sort of panels from the book, from the stories, and on the other is just awesome and creepy and macabre. Sweet. So I will be talking about that very soon, and probably sharing some pictures on Instagram because I can never resist when it's a graphic novel. And also yesterday, because it was a day of packages, as was today, I got two unsolicited books from Scholastic, let me make sure I'm telling the truth, yes, from Scholastic, um, that I hadn't heard of and don't know that I really have time for, so I might end up doing a giveaway of these, but first I'll probably record a teaser for you guys so that you can judge if it's something that you want for yourself. But the first one is A Million Ways Home by Diana Dorsey Wingett. I'm sorry if I massacred that name, which my guess would be sort of contemporary, um, I think sort of family, social thingy, eloquent, right? And then the other one is Finding Ruby Starling by Karen Rivers, which again sounds contemporary. It's about a girl who is looking for pictures of herself online and finds someone who looks just like her and realizes she has a twin. And I flipped through yesterday and it looks like it's told completely in emails, so kind of modern version of an epistolary novel, which sounds pretty interesting. And I had a book called Tweetheart that was sent to me a few years ago that was told all through emails and tweets and private messages and things like that, that I thought was potentially going to be really cheesy and it actually really worked and was really cool. So something to look into if either of those interest you. So that was all of the books and I was going to stop there, but UPS just came. So I do have one more bookish thing that I need to share with you guys. But I gotta open it first. This is a crazy box, and I can't figure out where to open it. Aha. Aw, uh, yeah. So I may have broken down and gotten myself a Kindle Fire. I know everyone's mad at Amazon right now, and I know I'm supposed to be mad at Amazon too, but I've been wanting one for a while, and I've gotten in this habit recently of wanting to read in bed, and I've been reading on my phone a lot, which is how I read a lot of the junk that I read in the last few months that I've talked about in my wrap-ups. All of it unplanned, all of it just random Kindle downloads. Here's the thing. I'm inherently lazy at night when I want to read, and I want to have the light off so that I can go to sleep a little faster, and I understand the LCD screens are piping light directly into your eyes, but it's a little bit different. Less all-consuming, so a little easier to go to bed and not stay up all night reading. So I've been reading on my phone, and that way when I'm done and I'm tired, I don't have to get up and turn the light off, I can just turn my phone off and we're good. I know that's so lazy, but just, you know, it is what it is. Long story short, that's my justification. I needed it. So yeah, I just, whatever. I wanted it. I got it. I'm going to load it up with all of the Kindle books that I bought even though I didn't have a Kindle because, you know, 
daily deals. Maybe I'll take more from NetGalley and stuff too because it's always kind of kept me from doing the ebooks because I didn't have any reader and it was always a nice convenient excuse not to take on more and this is probably going to be really bad but you know it is what it is and it made me happy. So between that and the camera I should be kept pretty happy for a while. Also I just saw this out of the corner of my eye and I'm going to show you. I already showed this on Instagram. This has nothing to do with books but it's just sheer cuteness so I needed to share. It's my little geisha bento box. It's so cute. All right, that's probably much, much, much longer than I intended, but that is all the bookish stuff in my mail. All right, me again. After I finished recording this and editing it, because I edited it immediately, which is rare for me, but, you know, new camera, I'm excited. I almost immediately got two more packages, so I figured I'd better go ahead and add them into this one rather than hanging on to them for the next one, just on the off chance that I forget or, you know, lose them in the black hole that is my room. I'm going to go ahead and add those on, and those two books are. From the awesome folks at Walden Pond Press, I got a finished copy of The Dyerville Tales by M. Kozlowski. You may recall I just showed you The Hero's Guide to Being an Outlaw. Same deal, they sent me a signed copy with a letter from MP thanking me for being part of the blog tour and including it in Fairytale Fortnite and all that jazz, so that was very nice. Let me not block the book with the letter. There we go. So thank you everyone at Walden Pond and MP. And can I just tell you how excited my mom is going to be that I have a signed copy? <laughs> Some of you may remember that my mom pretty much immediately stole the ARC from me and read it and loved it and wouldn't stop texting me about it. So yeah, she's going to be pretty excited about this one. The other one came from the folks at Bloomsbury and it is a finished copy of the recently released paperback version of The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I love this cover, and I've heard endless good things about this. Um, it's supposed to be really good, sort of epic fantasy, to my understanding. And the sequel is coming out soon, so they're doing a reread of this. Bloomsbury is doing a reread on Goodreads um, in August, I believe the letter said. Let me double check that. Oh, there was a bookmark. Starting in August on Goodreads, they're having a reread. So if you want to reread it or you haven't read it yet and want to read and discuss it with people, The Bone Season, Goodreads, August check it out. I love the design of this, by the way. This sort of reminds me a little bit of Diana Gabaldon's um, Outlander series. I really like the whole design of it, and if you come across this in a store, pick it up and just give it a loving little stroke because it's got that like gorgeous buttery matte finish. Love it. All right, so that really is all for now. Okay, one more note from Future Misty. I just, this video is going to be endless and I've committed to that. Um, ignore the mess behind me. I'm sorting through clothes to give away and just black hole. A couple more things in the mail and a couple things I forgot to tell you about, so, you know, let's just go ahead and aim for a 20 minute video, right? In the mail, I got this little packet from Heather Demetrios for being part of her blogger caravan for the upcoming book that she has called Exquisite Captive, which I want to say is coming out in October. But anyway, she sent all these goodies. It's so, so cute. I just needed to show you guys, but I can't get it out. Oh yeah, comes out the 7th of October. Um, here's a little card about the whole nonsense, but you can't see that because it's blurry. <laughs> it says that if you pre-order a copy, you get a custom signed book plate, button, and bookmark, and you can find out more at her site. And then it has a little signed book plate and a little button. It says not for sale. It has a little bit about the Instagram contest that she's doing called My Three Wishes. I'll leave a link to that below so you can find out more about that. It has two little rubber stretch bracelets. Everything smells like sandalwood. Two bracelets. One says not for sale and the other one says live your what? Sandalwood. Hence the everything smells like sandalwood. And this little box and the note that came with. In the box is a necklace. Here's the necklace part. I'm just going to show you the pendant and tell you what it says. I'm going to be out of focus for a second so you guys can see the pendant. And it says that included inside is sand that she gathered from a dune in the Sahara Desert in Morocco at dawn. That's awesome. And then to represent different aspects in the book, there's a genuine amethyst and pieces of lapis lazuli. That is really, really cool. So I thought that that bared sharing with you guys. Other thing I forgot to show you was, along with the copy of Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend, there was a lip balm, a little chapstick, and it smells delicious, very sweet and cotton candy-ish, but also like, I don't know, just very sweet and yummy. 
Mm. So <laughs> cool things that I forgot to show you. Also today got another book, this time from For a Second, and it's The Renjis by Feral Dalrymple. Sounds really good and just dark. <laughs> dark as all get out and I'm looking forward to that. And one last thing, and this is just a funny story that I wanted to share about that signed copy of The Diaryville Tales that I showed you guys, that I talked about how much my mom loved that book. So I showed her that I got a signed copy of it, and she snatched it out of my hands so excited and was like, yay! She thought it was the sequel, and she was so eager for it and was like in the middle of a book, but seriously looked like she was going to put it down and start reading it. And I said, it's not, it's just the finish, the book, it's out now. And she looked so crushed. It was like I had taken her lollipop. <laughs> and then I laughed and I kind of, you know, felt like an asshole. So, yeah, just things that needed to be shared in this endless video. Really, I'm done now. You want to know what's great about this endless video? The fact that when I sat down to edit in all of those bits and pieces that I had forgotten to tell you about or were late editions or whatever, and I told you about the little chapstick that I got with a book that I had forgotten to show you when I showed you the book. No, I didn't even show you the book. I mean, really brain? Really? Really brain? <laughs> this is the vlog that wouldn't end. <sighs> oh, so, so many like costume changes in this video because, you know, uh, okay, whatever. The book that, you know, that chapstick went with, <laughs> Broken Hearts, Fences, and Other Things to Mend by Katie Finn also known as Morgan Matson. so if you like her stuff, you'll probably like Katie's insider tip. This came with a really funny letter from Morgan Katie, Morgady Kagan, which made me definitely more eager for the book because if you're that funny in just like a silly little letter, probably going to be that funny in the book too. But anyway, now it probably makes a little bit more sense, the chapstick, to go with the book, you know. That's all because this video is already so long, so I will talk about this soon. Let me know what you think of the books in the comments if you've read them or want to read them or anything cool you've gotten recently. And until next time, that's all for now. As always, thanks for watching and happy reading! I'm trying to edit and it is the 4th of July, so there are loud fireworks, which means that I have the world's largest lap dog helping me edit right now. So I thought Marley would say hi. Hi, Marley. Say hi, Marley. Yeah. You. Me. Okay. And it. Little rubber stretch bracelets. Bracelet. I love new technology to play with. Uh, upside down's not gonna work.